is Jesus Manuel Menegar. I hope you're doing fantastic wherever you are. In this edition, I'm going to be talking about the different types of camping that you can do in the United States of America and probably across the world. But my only experience is in the United States, Los Estados Unidos. So I've done all kinds of different camping with my children, my family, my friends uh, over the years. And uh, I really enjoy camping. In fact, I'm looking forward to doing camping until, pr until pretty much uh, I can't <laughs> go uh, camping anymore, okay? So uh, the most basic type of camping is tent camping. I've gone tent camping in the uh, Big Sur wilderness and also uh, Desolation Wilderness, the Sierras, uh, all over the Southwest. I really enjoyed, uh, in the past, doing some tent camping. My wife and I used to go backpacking, and we'd take our, you know, roll, our bed, uh, you know, our, uh, our sleeping bag, and all our food, and, uh, and a water filtration system, and bear uh, safe, and bear bell. My wife likes her bear bell. And we'd go hiking in the Sierras, for example, and we'd stay there for a, less than a week, maybe five days or so. And we'd stay there, and we'd have a two-person tent. Very modest. Uh, it's pretty much, we should have got a three-person tent because even though we're, I'm a 5'10", 175, and my wife is 5'7", 140, we still were pretty tight in our tent. So, so we're in the middle of wilderness. Uh, essentially, uh, actually, we encountered a mountain lion when we were camping in the Lake Tahoe area, the Desolation Wilderness, for example. Okay, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, you filter your water, you go to the river and you filter the water through a water filter, a specific water filter, a ceramic water filter. You make your own food and you go hike and you go fishing. And if you catch anything, uh, you cook it and it's a great time. Another example would be going with my uh, children and family uh, to like Big Sur and we camp along the beach in the one of Bluff, for example, Kirk Creek Campground. We'd go there. Didn't need reservations at the time, back in the <laughs> early 80s. And so uh, we'd go camping there. We had a great time. Of course, we'd be in our tent. I would take my Volkswagen Bug, put my tent in there, and uh, we, we'd go there and have a fantastic time. Of course, I would view the people in the Class A having uh, a beverage and coffee in the morning. And it was, I go, oh, I, ne I never seen a Class A before back in the 80s. I go, that's pretty nice. And I, I, I must admit, I was a significantly jealous of that. But my children and I, my, you know, my family, we would go to the beach. We'd go to, you know, Jade Cove and walk around, uh, collect shells and stuff like that. And we had, again, great family adventures, okay? So that's tent camping. It's very affordable for most folks. All you got to do is have your regular car, your regular vehicle, just throw stuff in the trunk and head wherever you're going to go. Or you can park somewhere like we went to Desolation Wilderness. We parked at uh, uh, Echo Lake at the little parking spot there. And then we'd hike from there uh, to go tent camping in the wilderness uh, you know, for four or five days. Okay, It's a lot of fun. We also camped other places in the Southwest, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Wyoming. The list goes on and on and on. So, again, tent camping is a good introduction and a super, super affordable way to go camping with your family, okay? The next upgrade from that was for us, my family, my wife and I, and not my children. They're, they're in their 40s now. They're no longer go ca uh, camping with us. Uh, they go camping with their their children, my grandchildren. So uh, my wife and I will go truck bed camping. I specifically bought my Chevy Colorado extended cab because it had a six foot bed, six foot two inch bed, and I'm 5'10", and my wife is 5'7", and we fit in there. We go sleep in the back. We put a, we put a cab on the unit, you know, a little you know, cab, and uh, it worked out very nicely. It's not insulated, so if it's 30 degrees outside, it's 30 degrees inside. And of course, there were all kinds of drafts you know, from the tailgate, et cetera, et cetera. But we always took with us, again, our sleeping bag and maybe a down cover to keep us nice and very warm, especially on those cool nights. When we go camping, like, for example, at the uh, Pins Padre Island National Seashore uh, by Corpus Christi, you didn't need all that stuff. You know, we just had our tailgate down. There's no bears that I noticed. 
And we just let the breeze hit us, and it was fun sleeping at the beach. We did that last, you know, winter. It was tremendous, tremendous fun. So that's truck bed camping. Essentially, you just bring all your stuff, sleep in the back of your truck, and maybe have another tent if you want to, you know, store some odds and ends, or maybe even sleep in the tent. Uh, but we slept in the truck bed. My truck bed is carpeted, and... Um, Easy to get in, easy to get out, nicely carpeted. Even the, the uh, tailgate is carpeted. Very nice. I have a, uh, a, a rug in there, and it works very, very nice. So it's not a little, you know, some cold metal that you have to touch all the time. It's, you feel carpet. And if you wanted to attach something to it, you just use a little Velcro in the carpet and the ceiling for the, the cab and the floor. It would stay there and uh, wouldn't go anywhere, okay? <laughs> So my wife and I would sit in the back of the, for example, just a year ago, we'd be, uh, less than a year ago, we'd go uh, to Padre Island National Seashore, New Mexico, you know, Colorado, New Mexico, you know, all, all kinds of places, uh, California. And we'd just look at our phones and read the news after we downloaded it in downtown, I'd read the news. Because typically where we camp, there's no reception, no TV reception. No radio reception. No nothing. It's, we go to places that are rather isolated in the mountains. Okay. So many of you in the Midwest have, don't have these issues because it's flat. And then after it gets flat, it's flatter. So you know, those radio signals or TV signals, they travel. But in the mountains, you know, you're in some valley and then you go to the next valley and you're not going to get any signal. Okay. So we just read our books, uh, played video games on our phone and watched the news. Uh, you know, all the news that we saved, we downloaded when we were in town and call it good, okay? So again, the, the big downside of truck bed camping, there's quite a few of them actually, is that uh, if it's 20 degrees outside, it's 20 degrees inside. If it's 110 degrees outside, it's 110 degrees inside. There's no insulation, to be honest with you. We have some... Uh, some little bit of shielding, but it doesn't really work that well, okay? Of course, no toilet. So if, if you want to go uh, to the restroom, you have to go to the pit toilet or dig a hole somewhere in the middle of nature and poop and pee there and cover it up very nicely. Uh, off the trail, of course, and uh, that's how that works, okay? But you can go anywhere. You, got, you know, Anywhere you can take your truck, you can go camping, and it's very, very nice. Again, no kitchen. We had a propane stove, of course, we put it on, on the camp table or wherever we're at. And uh, no bathroom, and no, no TV, no, no stuff like that. So it's, it's one step up from a tent, okay? One step up from a tent. So. When I used to tent camp, uh, sometimes it was, it was so rocky and I can feel it on my back. Oh, man, that's, that's some seriously rough. Even, and then one night I you know, camped quickly in one spot and my uh, air mattress went like this overnight. Psst, when I woke up, it was not there. Uh, one night I was at the beach also and that tent went like this. Whoosh, collapsed. We just still slept. Eh, just sleep. It's, it's collapsed. What can you do? So now, uh, you know, I also had, back in the day, back in the uh, six, 70s, no, 90s through uh, 2010 around there, I had a Class B. Basically, I built myself a little Class B. My wife and I put a futon in it, and we had a very nice, very comfortable. We would go to the Sierras, New Mexico, Arizona, all over the place, and we had a great time camping in our, you know, basically a Ford Aerostar Class B, four-wheel drive, very nice. We, we went some very rustic and fabulous places with my uh, Ford, you know, uh, uh, van, Class B, as I call it. Okay, it wasn't the most elegant, but it was incredibly functional and very, very, very warm. I loved it. I really, really loved it. And of course, we went some great spots like Emerald Bay in Lake Tahoe. We'd see the great views. I'd go fishing, I'd catch some uh, crayfish, I'd catch some trout, and A+, plus, A+, plus adventures <clears throat> with my, uh, my van, okay. In about a month, I'll be receiving my uh, travel trailer from Juan RV. Uh, a shout out to all my friends, uh, Devin Puckett and everybody at Juan RV, and of course, the folks at Rockwood 
Flagstaff, uh, Anthony Yoder. Saludos from Fort Worth, Texas. I look forward to getting my uh, travel trailer in early December. I'm going to be traveling down there. Okay, and I'm going to be taking my truck, which is a mid-sized truck, and I have a very, I think it's readily towable travel trailer. When I looked at a travel trailer, I said, I, I want this one. I don't want this one. Let's see if we can find something relatively somewhere in the middle that my truck apparently, the word is apparently, can tow readily. My truck can tow 7,000 pounds. This thing loaded with stuff is approximately 6,000 pounds. So it should tow it. And it's not very long. It's only 23 feet, 10 inches. And it's not the tallest RV either. So it should work out. Again, what are the big benefits of a travel trailer? TV, bathroom, sink, shower, <laughs> all that great stuff. And a full size for this travel trailer that I'm getting, a 2205S mini light. It has a full size bed. Wow! Who would have thought? Sleeping in an actual bed with a you know, nice little down comforter, nice uh, pillows, and my wife next to me. What's not to like? It's not to like maybe even watch a little you know tv watch a little uh, movie or something check out the news if i get a signal <laughs> so that's a definite upgrade and when i go camping in those situations i usually go to uh, state parks county parks i really like going to state and county parks they're very affordable for me they're usually about 10 to 20 dollars no problem typically uh no no amenities outside of that you can get some water and they have a pit toilet okay uh, my wife and i since we're going to be getting a travel trailer we might be considering uh, once in a while just once in a while maybe getting full hookups you know water electricity and dumps you know that would be very nice wouldn't it it'll be a change of uh experience for my wife and I, my wife and I have never towed anything. We've always traveled either in our truck by itself or gone tent camping or we've gone in our Volkswagen or our 57 Chevy, whatever vehicle we had at the time, we'd go camping in that. And it worked out for us, okay? So this is a new experience. We're gonna be towing something behind us. So we had to buy a bunch of new stuff. So travel trailers are expensive compared to tent camping or truck bed camping. So it's a big jump up, okay? It's a big jump up in expense. Of course, you can get a blinged out, very nice travel trailer. I would love to have a Lance travel trailer, but they typically go for $40,000, $50,000. I would love an Oliver Legacy 2, you know, with all the amenities. That typically goes for $60,000, $75,000. Same size, pretty close to the same size as my current travel trailer, which I bought for twenty. dollars five thousand dollars okay so it's all a matter of your budget how much can you afford some folks out there can rationalize buying something like a winnebago echo for 150 grand plus there's this one guy in utah who's who's currently up up he bought the he got the winnebago and now he's getting <laughs> all kinds of batteries all kinds of changes to his suspension and you know some people have that money i don't have that I don't have that money. I'm not an influencer. I'm not getting anything free. So he can buy that, get that. I don't know if he got a discount from Winnebago. Did he get it for free from Winnebago as a ambassador, brand ambassador? So, you know, you got the $150,000 RV and you add in about essentially a hundred grand of stuff. Some people can do that. And of course, I've uh, reviewed in the past some very nice Tiffin uh, Class A 45 foot motorhomes and uh, other brands of motorhomes by different manufacturers. Two, three, four, five hundred thousand bucks a pop. So $25,000 for me is what I can afford. What can you afford? Please leave your comments and suggestions and what you're up to and what kind of uh, uh, how you roll uh, when you go camping. I'd greatly appreciate to learn. And of course, a lot of us. Uh, travel trailer newbies. I consider myself a travel trailer newbies. I've towed vehicles all across the country, you know, heavy vehicles and stuff like that, but I've never gone uh, specifically, uh, you know, for a travel trailer. So again, that's going to be a good experience, a new experience for me. I'll readily find out if my truck can readily tow this travel trailer. It's supposed to. Again, it's supposed to, but you never know. Okay, you never know. 
Maybe uh, I'll have to make some changes, either for a truck or a travel trailer. We'll soon see. So again, there's super expensive places that you can go. I'm, uh, you know, you can go, for, you know, boondocking, very basic, essentially free on national park land and uh, forestry land or on certain beaches and stuff like that. It's free, no charge. All you have to do is make sure you have water and uh, all your food and all your beverages and <laughs> stuff that you take along. And of course, you can go to county and state parks and uh, they go for anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks, especially for a senior, I get half price. I'm going on 70 years old in uh, 2022, so, so very affordable. And again, you can go to private campgrounds and other campgrounds with have facilities and they usually vary between 30 and 200 bucks. Typically, they're about 60 bucks from a report that I just recently read. They're about 60 bucks a day for a lot of these private campgrounds. Again, uh, what do I want when I go camping? What do I want? What do I, what does this dude from San Francisco Bay Area want? I want to see a beach or I want to see a mountain. I want evergreen forests or sandy beaches. So that's what I prefer seeing. I'll do some desert boondocking once in a while just to try it out. I'll go to the Midwest once in a while just to check it out. But those are my preferences. I like to go to the Sierras and I like to go down the coast uh, all the way from Washington all the way to San Diego and check out the beaches and uh, those spots. That's what I want. Maybe go to uh, Tetons, maybe go to Yosemite, go to Yellowstone. Stuff like that, Kings Canyon. I really enjoy Mother Nature. What is nature to me? Nature is not being uh, one travel trailer like this and another RV like that, and, uh, and the real. And you can hear your neighbors uh, talking about current events <laughs> next door. That's not my idea of camping. Okay, I'll be very strict. I'm gonna have to deal with that once in a while, but it's not my idea of. I want to be in nature. I want a tree over there. I want a tree over there. Maybe a beach over here. Maybe a mountain over there. And I'm happy. That's what I want. Maybe in the desert once in a while. Check it out. Just, you know, because we like to go to Tucson, visit friends. We like to go to New Mexico and visit friends. And we like to go to the Rockies for sure. Because they have mountains. <laughs> you know, Colorado, rather, I was going to say. So I hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. What kind of camping do you like to do? Tell me about it below. You know, again, it's, you know, I started out for many, many, many years doing tent camping. Then I gravitated towards uh, truck bed camping. And I'm now, and I also did some class B camping, very modest class B camping. And now I'm getting a travel trailer. and We're going to be uh, towing that here and there and hopefully successfully. And hopefully you won't see me in the news. <laughs> <laughs> Some insanity happened, okay. I don't want nothing, nothing bad to happen. I don't want anything bad to happen. I'm gonna be driving very conservatively, uh, driving the speed limit. <laughs> I pray, I do well. So from Fort Worth, Texas, this has been a Sus Manuel Menegarza talking about the Panapoli, the, uh, the different types of, uh, you know, the continuum of uh, camping out there. Of course, you budget camping, expensive camping. You know, wherever you, where do you want to go camping? I don't know. I know where I want to go. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy camping. I have always enjoyed camping with my wife, children, and friends, and family. I really enjoy it. Thanks for checking out my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. This is a rather modest channel. This is my hobby. And if you have a chance, please uh, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. And if you have uh, anything interesting to say, of course, you're a super interesting person. We already know that. Uh, leave your kind and super friendly comments below. Abajo. I like to read them. And the other uh, people that check out this channel enjoy uh, checking out what you have to say. Thank you ahead of time. From Fort Worth, Texas, this has been Asus Manuel Menagarza. Hope you're doing super, super, super fantastic. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.